I, I think there's some problem with the slides. Can I ask a question while we're waiting? Um, I noticed when you had the tube erosion um, that you cleaned up and then you did a conjectival advancement. Um, in the United States, we, we will sometimes freeze the base around that area, freeze the sclera, because usually when those tubes are exposed, you'll get epithelial downgrowth pretty quickly. Do you do that typically here in India? Do you do any freezing of the base no, uh, or anything not, like that? We've never had the experience of, of, of trying to freeze but um, I just, I'm thinking that if you freeze and make it avascular, what would happen to the vascularity of the surrounding area? Here you want it to vascularize as much as possible and, you know, kind of healing happens. So once you've frozen that area around it, um, I, I'm just thinking, I mean, what, what do you think would, would happen to the vascularity? Yeah, we, we like to freeze in the United States because we feel like uh, the epithelium uh, is aggressive. It'll grow down and around the tube and on the scleral base. And so... By freezing, you can kill that, that epithelium you can't see, and then uh, the thought is, is that the, the remaining, when you close it then primarily, that it, that it stays unexposed. Um, but it's interesting that uh, that's what we do, yeah. but maybe it doesn't work any better. But then after doing the freezing, would you, would you put something over? Something? Yeah, we'll put tutaplast or corneal yeah. or cornea over it and then bring conch back across yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, sorry, sorry for the delay. Y yes, Ben. Uh, all right, so you have already seen some of the complications, and I'll basically uh, take you through the tube migration uh, and tube retraction, and also how to deal with if the hypertension is persistent. So, this is an 11 year old boy where the he had a trauma, uh, post trauma lensectomy, vitrectomy was done, pressure was high. So we had put actually a uh, AGB for this patient some time ago, and you can see, you can't really see any tube uh, in the anterior chamber now, and the intraocular pressure is already high. So basically what has happened, the tube has retracted. So if the tube retracts, then what do you have option is that you can put a tube extender, uh, but these tube extenders are kind of bulky, and if the conjunctiva is not good, that tend to, uh, conjunctiva tend to erode over this, and then actually that leads to more complications. So we found a little easier solution for that. One can use it, Ali has a very long tube, so you can, or you can take a silicon tube, uh, which, can, which can be sterilized, uh, you know, and uh, or if you have an RD tube which can be uh, preserved and sterilized and you can use this uh, segment of the tube to extend the, uh, the you, you can join it uh, and uh, with the uh, leftover stump. So we are dissecting this uh, conjunctiva basically and you can see there's no tube in the interior chamber. So you'll have a, a scar tissue there uh, because we had earlier put a, a patch graft over it so you have to carefully find out where the tube is retracted. First you have to uh, dissect and find the tube. So you can see there's a little stump of the tube which has retracted from the interior chamber. So putting an uh, extender is difficult because there's already a scar there. So what we do is you just open the, because it's an elastic tube, so you just open like a fish mouth, use it forceps, insert into the lumen and open it up, and that becomes like a fish mouth, and you can feed the other tube into the same. So you can kind of telescope the two tubes, so it takes a little uh, effort because the tubes, uh, silicone is slippery. So best is to use Utrata's forcer, which has a little bend there. And because this joint could, st could still slip, so you can pass a 10-0 uh, nylon suture through this. Don't tie it too tight to occlude the tube, but just to keep them together set so that when you are inserting the tube in the anterior chamber accidentally, you don't pull it off. So once this is done, you can see there's hardly any extra uh, material there, and this would ac accommodate into the wound very nicely. Now you can trim the tube to the desired length, 
and you can create a new tunnel uh, with a needle if you want or you could use the previously created tunnel uh, if it is still uh, available uh, to put the tube, this tube into the anterior chamber and then you can close it as you do it for uh, just close the wound. So this way, this is very easy way basically to do it and this is post-operatively after uh, one year the pressure is well maintained and you can see on ultrasound there is a fluid lake there uh, which is there and this is how that area looks like. So this is doing very well and very kind of low cost and easy method to uh, do the tube. Uh, another video I want to show is basically of the tube migration. Now here the tube has migrated into the anterior chamber. Uh, I think Vinay has already shown you this is another way of uh, dealing with. So this is again a post, uh, post vitrectomy patient, 26-year-old male following trauma. Uh, implantation was done some years ago, but the tube has kind of migrated into the anterior chamber. This is a, a fake patient. So what we do here is, uh, again, a very simple way of doing it. So make uh, two side port incisions with an MVR, one parallel in, in line with the tube, which is long and make another injection viscoelastic to uh, prevent the eye from collapsing. Uh, then you make another uh, incision which, will be, uh, which would be at a right, right angle to this tube. <coughs> so again, I'm using MVR knife, so you have nice controlled uh, incision there. And once it is done, you take some forceps, Rata's forceps basically, put one of the tongs into the lumen, that's important because otherwise this is going to slip. So one of the tongs has to go into the lumen and when you hold it, now it's not going to slip and you can use this forceps to cut the tube and take it out. So it's a very easy way to do it and very simple. You don't need any uh, external dissection and provided you have space in the anterior chamber. So if there's a fake kick or pseudo fake kick eye, this could easily be done. The tube is still longer so you can go again for the second time and you can cut it more if you want to do that. So again, put the, put the tongue, one of the prongs into the uh, uh, lumen and then hold. That way it will not slip. Otherwise silicone is slippery and you could lose the tube into the anterior chamber and in this eye you could have gone into the vitreous cavity uh, also. So, okay, so this is how it looks like on day one, uh, uh, day one post of it. The whole of the thing is not coming actually. Uh, the screen are not showing all, but the cornea was clear and you can, the tube is uh, uh, very well uh, placed. So another one, uh, video I want to show is how to deal with the persistent hypertony because uh, this was a patient of chronic uh, anterior ubiotis juvenile uh, and uh, uh, the Adi was implanted uh, a few years ago uh, because of the high intraocular pressure. Uh, so what happened was that following uh, Adi implantation, the eye uh, went, went into hypertony and as you can see there's a hypertonic uh, maculopathy, the disc edema, the retina is very glossy, thick and you can the skeletal contour is badly distorted uh, and patient had hypertony. So we needed to uh, uh, rectify this situation. Uh, we did use some steroids and conservative measures, but it didn't work. So ultimately, we had we ligated the tubes. Now here, what I have done that we have ligated the tube like a. Uh, this this is all actually under the conjunctiva because conjunctiva is thin, transparent, and there's no fluid, so you can see it clearly. Uh, so that's the tube. There's a patch graft, and beyond the patch graft, there's the tube. So I have used a slip knot here, like a releasable suture. So all this is lying under the tissue is visible because the conjunctiva is transparent, but this little loop is kept outside. So once you ligated the tube, the pressure builds up and you can see the hypotonic changes, they are reversed. Uh, but the pressure has gone up, so the pressure is con controlled with uh, m uh, uh, medication, but once, if, the, if it's not possible to, uh, if the pressure is too high, it's persistently going more than 30 milliliters of mercury or even touching 40, then we had to uh, reduce, uh, release the suture uh, again. So this gives us an opportunity basically to release the stitch again. And this is how uh, we did it. So what you have to do is that you inject, because if you release the suture, there will be sudden hypotony, the sudden release of the aqueous into this implant. So there will be sudden hypotonic choroidals and those complications will come back again. So what you do is you first inject fluid into the capsule. So with a you know, thin needle, you thoroughly fill that cavity which is the potential space around that plate. And this is important, otherwise there'll be sudden gush of fluid uh, echoes from 
interior chamber into that space and the AC is going to collapse. So build up pressure in the cavity and once that is done, you can see this releasable, uh, releasable suture is still there. Now you can see this suture is hidden, most of it is hidden because it's under the tissue and this little loop is outside so you just pull that loop out. So you have to be careful not to yank the tube off because this is a bit tight. So support the tube with the forceps and then gradually pull it out. And once you pull it out, now you will have a fluid uh, coming from the anterior chamber draining into, the, into this cavity. So, so this was actually the course of this patient. We had a high pressure in the beginning. We had a tube. It went into persistent hypertony. And then we ligated and the IOP was fluctuating. We were not able to control well. And then we released the suture. And fortunately, after releasing the suture, the pressure has been maintained at about 10, 12 millimeters of mercury for almost a year now. So pull it uh, across over to the, you know, over the, uh, basically if the tissue is necrotic, you have to remove that and put a uh, graft there. You can take the graft from the other eye uh, or from, uh, or a uh, amniotic membrane and try to cover it. Uh, fortunately, in this patient, it did work out well and you can have, there's a lot of scarring here, but uh, the tube exposure has not uh, uh, come back uh, again. And sometimes if there's a plate exposure, that's really uh, difficult to handle. Uh, if you really want to, uh, uh, most of the time they would uh, end up with the uh, remove of the plate and the tube itself, but one can make an attempt. Uh, this was a uh, patient, we had this patient again, 35 years old, had a uh, tube uh, implanted there and later on there was a erosion, there's a patch graft and there was erosion. Actually, the, uh, the the plate has migrated interiorly uh, and also there was an erosion later the suture. Uh, so we had to dissect out this uh, and cover this plate. Uh, if you just put the conjunctiva over it then or, uh, or the amniotic membrane, it may not work uh, because it's going to uh, come back again. So what we did here, we actually uh, removed the whole thing. So what you have to do is you have to uh, you have to freshen the edges there. It's still small. So you could freshen the edges. Uh, it's very important uh, because the, the epithelium, uh, you know, gets kind of a epithelium joins the, grows over the tenons capsule a little bit. So you freshen the edges and to achieve that, you could find that plane, inject some fluid and you can hydro dissect. So once you have created that plane with the fluid, then you can, uh, you know, separate the tissues uh, a little easily. and mobilize the con adequately conjunctiva and the tendon capsule both have to be mobilized and then you take a uh, this is basically a corneal graft so you could take a corneal or a skirt patch graft remove the epithel epithelium and the endothelium side so make it uh, raw on both the sides and put, cover the whole thing whole of the plate uh, with this, with this uh, new graft uh, because this is a silicon material which is lying very anteriorly and any uh, if you cover it only with conjunctiva or uh, you know some other tissue is going to erode through again so you have to uh, even if the defect is small you really have to be, use a big graft and cover it uh, nicely pull the sclera and the tendon capsule together and uh, bring it over the graft so that way you can try to salvage this uh, uh, implant finish okay so this is how it, it looks uh, after surgery. Uh, you can see it's still early days after surgery, but uh, so far this has not uh, eroded. So to summary, uh, in summary, GDDs have their complications specific to them, and most of them can be managed uh, effectively if identified in time and due care is taken. Thank you very much. Um, uh,